welcome my Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Welcome to your seven card draw. What do I need, Read for this new moon in Pisces, waxing to full in Libra, March 2021. I am your reader, Mark Angela Lyons Mal, for a short professional witch, professional intuitive president of Drawing the Circle Productions, the Archangel of Lyons, Mark Angela Lyons, but you... You, my Aquarians, you can call me Mal. Hi, <laughs> how you doing? Uh, getting ready for uh, a road trip, heading up north to see my parents up in Saratoga. So getting uh, the last few of these What Do I Need reads uh, done, the Waxing Moon reads, uh, going on the road, taking work with me, and uh, getting ready for the first day of spring, Ostara, uh, this uh, weekend, this Saturday, what is that, Saturday the 20th? Yeah, we've got some cool stuff getting ready to hit the channel. Uh, also, because my book, Words of Grace, now out on Kindle, uh, is broken down into chakras and sabbats, being that, you know, it's a vernal equinox. One of the uh, eight sabbats of the Pagan Wheel of the Year will be doing something here on the channel one way or another that weekend. So it's all falling into place. Can't wait to see my parents and very, very um, feeling good feeling good and ready to do this read. Uh, as I said, uh, my, my book, Words of Grace, is on Kindle. There's a link in the description box, as well as I am doing both free and paid events on my Drawing the Circle Productions Facebook page. Not the Mark Angela Lyons Mal for short Facebook group. That's the group. The page is Drawing the Circle because the page is your front door and the, uh, the group is your living room. <laughs> that's exactly how Facebook put it, and that's exactly how... Uh, my shit runs on Facebook, so let's have at it. Uh, really, really quick, if you are new to the channel, the seven card draw just means seven different decks, one card each. This time we are doing four oracles, two tarot decks, and one healing system to get you the clues, tips, and hints that you need for a specific timeline. So this is not a timeless uh, uh, reading sort of like a card a day, like you pick one card for the day, but it's picking seven and it's for two weeks, right? The waxing moon, uh, we might as well do that. We're looking at the new moon, uh, which was on Saturday, uh, yesterday, no, day before yesterday, sorry, I jumped a day, uh, uh, the 13th of March, 5.21 a.m., waxing to the full in Libra on uh, March 28th, 2.48 p.m. All times on my channel are um, Eastern because I am in New York. Uh, so let's get up in this. Um, all the decks that I read are in the bottom of the description box with other cool stuff on the way down there if you want to check it out. Um, all I can ask anyone is standard YouTube reading rules apply, right? They should make standard YouTube like in the community guidelines. <laughs> it's a general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't, check your other signs, particularly with reads like this, because you'll get either different information uh, from your other planetary placements on either the same situation or something else you need to know about according to the pantheons of the divine to which I am intimately contracted to do this work. Lucky me. Please take a nice deep breath. Right, and all I can ever ask from anybody watching one of my videos or receiving one of these readings is both feet on the floor if you can and focus on your breath if you will. I will do the same to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace, the truth of what you need to be aware of or deal with this waxing moon. March 2021, here we go. My archangels and angels of air and the sign of Aquarius, the Raphaelites, please one card in clarity. For the Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading, Healing with the Angels, Oracle, Doreen Virtues deck here. What is the angel they most need to look at, tune to, build a relationship with? That's a really good way to look at that. This new moon in Pisces to full moon in Libra, March 2021. Well, to build a relationship, that's great. I've never said that before. Aquariums, thank you. Uh, freedom. What would the healing angel of freedom do? <laughs> Free up your healing. There's so many ways to play with that uh, because they, it is the healing with the angel's oracle. It's not the angel's name isn't freedom. Uh, that's its job, right? Its function. So freeing up your healing energy. Uh, if you are feeling particularly constrained by the physical events of planet Earth and for the past year, right, to feel your wings, right? It's like that's really when you feel your, 
the reason why angels have wings is because they take things lightly and there's a sense of, of altitude, of freedom, right? So you do feel your wings when you feel free, but you know, you might feel like you've got some steel bands around them for the past year or so. And, and so to build that sense, to heal that sense of freedom within, uh, within your energy field, certainly to call upon that angel to do that. Uh, but also remember that we do have free will and free will means free choice, right? Your will. What's like, that's how I learned the word. It's like willpower isn't just about pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. It's like, no, it's the power of choice, right? Very throat chakra. What is your final will and testament, right? Your final choices and decisions that, I mean, you don't have to do it on that level with this, but you know what I'm saying? Play with that. Please take a nice deep breath. Sticking with the angelic kingdom for another deck, we're going to do Archangel Ariel, one of the angels of the north, the Arielites, the Uriolites, the Oriolites. We want Archangel Ariel, who is also the Archangel of Lions, and I'm Archangel of Lions, so, you know, we're sort of connected that way. Breathe. Crystal Oracle, Tony Carmine Salerno, please, my beloved Archangel Ariel, one card in clarity for the Aquarian Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading please in tandem with the healing angels of freedom that they need to call upon what is the crystal oracle message the stone however whatever this means to them whether they have the stone or not or they need to get it or not or just what's written in the book this new moon in Pisces waxing to full in Libra, March 2021. Aquamarine, not blue, not green, not aquamarine. We're painting the roses red. I shouldn't have watched that movie on drugs in the 80s, but I did. Uh, aquamarine, <laughs> certain things are just burned into the cerebral cortex after uh, and certain experiences. Keywords for aquamarine. Moderation, <laughs> just I was talking about the exact opposite of that. Moderation, energy, literally the word energy, tolerance, gentleness, compassion, feminine as a key word, and goddess, the goddess. I just finished listening to The Mists of Avalon on audiobook on, um, on YouTube. You find it. <laughs> the goddess. It's very Angelica Houston, even though it's not her. Uh, whether male or female, you can overcome a current uh, conflict by reflecting upon and applying moderation, tolerance, gentleness, and compassion. It is very aquamarine, actually. Uh, these qualities uh, are not a weakness. Rather, they are strengths. What is called for at present is greater compassion and tolerance, coupled with a little patience and gentleness. It is possible to resolve things in an amicable amicable way. It was a little hard to say this morning. Uh, to create a positive outcome for all concerned. Alright, so this feels very diplomatic. And again, it's a waxing moon. It's not something you have to come up with like t right now. It's something that with that angel of freedom, you could be freeing up. Because these are all soul qualities, right? Compassion. The ego, not so much. But uh, the soul, certainly moderation, tolerance, compassion, that kind of stuff. As you look back on this current episode, you will realize a valuable lesson. Compassion and tolerance are signs of maturity and strength of character. They are qualities that infuse all with love and light. And that is true. Like I said, they're qualities of the soul. So when we embody them, we bring that frequency here into the third and fourth dimension and it's fifth dimensional unity consciousness and, you know, it just goes haywire in a divine plan sort of way. But putting these two together, then we're also talking about that goddess energy, right? That magnetic, divine divine feminine, like, has ultimately nothing to do uh, with bodily gender. Obviously, it manifests itself that way in physical form. But with the healing angel of freedom, there's probably this thing about, like, freeing yourself through compassion, saying, look, everybody's doing the best that they can, right? And, and uh, particularly, again, this keeps circling in every single reading. If you're an empath, right? And you are feeling other people's stuff. Make sure you are giving yourself that time and that space. There's nothing wrong with temporarily walking away from a situation and compassion for yourself. The Ashaya monks I worked with God, decades ago, a really brilliant uh, tradition there. And one of the monks explained to me that there is selfish compassion and selfless compassion. And really finding the balance of the two is a good idea because if you go too much into selfish compassion, you can end up being narcissistic. If you go too much into selfless compassion, you can become a martyr. So it's sort of filling your cup, selfish, and then 
giving it out and and uh, really the ultimate in the center place with that is is to fill your cup to overflow so that you give of the overflow so you never completely drain but that is so much easier said than done so there's something here about freeing you up we've got two oracles on the table let's get some tarot little tarot narrative daughters of the moon tarot one of my favorite decks i've been reading it longer and more than any other deck i've ever worked with really that goddess energy, right? Daughters of the Moon Tarot, definitely a feminist pagan deck. Um, let's see what's going on. Heart, throat, third eye crown, chakras inside of you, the world behind your eyes, your own psychological, mental, emotional, right? Like emotional power, willpower, mental power, spiritual power. Connected to all of this, please take a nice deep breath. <sighs> Exhale. <sighs> Inhale. Oh, my goddesses of air. And the sign of Aquarius, please. One card in clarity for the Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. Please, what is it they need to be aware of inside of themselves? Heart, throat, third eye, crown, their own interior world. Perhaps even the voice of that soul that wants to come forth in that compassion and that tolerance, but may not feel free to... Or maybe there is an, imp an impediment here that needs to be loosened up to be released. Please, what is it they need to be aware of inside of themselves? This new moon in Pisces, waxing to full in Libra. Now that's to uh, March 2021, please. Angel of Freedom with Aqua Marine and the Sagittarius energy. Just making sure, right? Yeah, the Sagittarius energy, the Crone of Flames. Now... Talk about transformation. This is Kiridwen. Or Kiridwen, I've heard that name said just as many times as I think I've heard Samhain and Athame said in so many different ways. Oh, the Celtic words. Um, Sagittarius energy, ninth house, expansion. Certainly your desires are in play here. Now, this is an interior card, so I don't really read court cards. Um, this would be the Knight of um, Wands, by the way. Uh, so that Sagittarius vibe says right on the card, Sagittarius. Um... I don't read that as a person inside of yourself, although if you have, like, Sagittarius Moon, that would be a little bit of a, yeah, this is definitely my read. But more than that, there is this sense of, perhaps, adventure. I will say, I know a lot of Saggies. I love my Saggies. They're a lot of fun. But freedom is a big word for Sagittarian ninth house energy. Look it up, right? It's like they are expansive. That's not just... Uh, uh, long distance travel, like wanting to travel around the world in 80 ways. <laughs> it's very expensive. Uh, uh, but in the mind, right? Metaphysics and spirituality and, you know, that mutable fire that always, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? I want this, I want this. And, you know, for good or ill, uh, depending on how each different one of you process that, the vibe that I'm getting here is that there is a sense of adventure and there. Now, this is the empathic part. There is, see that? It's like galloping on a horse. Actually, the, the Sagittarius, uh, the, the Knight of Wands canters the, the uh, it's one speed slower than gallop, which is the Gemini Knight. So there is. It's like you may feel like you're running a little bit in place, but there are things that you want here. There's definitely a, a fire on the inside and an expansive one, almost like the hero's, the call to the hero's journey maybe something like that you want the freedom to do it but you want to do this in a compassionate way and aquamarine's a lovely stone but you can pay a pretty penny for it too just make sure you know what you're getting you get what you pay for sometimes and sometimes you don't breathe all right mythic tarot my gods please my gods of air <laughs> and the sign of aquarius i feel that please one card in clarity for the Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. Because that that um, Sagittarius card, it's not that it concerns me, but it has certainly almost like a too expansive, unfocused energy to it. So please, what is it they need to be aware of? Lower three chakras, physical world, root sacrum, solar plexus, either how they appear from the outside looking in, which is going to be a good chunk of the collective, or someone, something, some person, place, or thing, some aspect of the story on the outside of this that they need to be aware of, this new moon in Pisces waxing to full in Libra with this aquamarine, the angel of freedom, and Kiridwin, a goddess of transformation in the cauldron. 
uh, The Hanged Man. So that's interesting. Uh, from the outside looking in, things really are on pause, but there's also a sacrifice being called for. I mean, this is voluntary sacrifice, usually. Uh, the Hanged Man, I mean, that's why they're always hanging by their feet. Now, not in this deck. This is Prometheus um, stole fire from the gods to give to humankind so they would be less dependent upon the Olympians. So it's actually the generation before the Olympians. Uh, and if you read um, Madeline Miller's Circe, he plays a role not just in the beginning in the book, but thematically uh, throughout, that his punishment for disobeying Zeus's law was to be tied to a rock in Tartarus. Now, Tartarus is as far down from the palace of uh, Hades and Persephone in the underworld as the underworld is far down from this world. So it's pretty far down there. Uh, and every day his liver was to be pecked out um, by a vulture. <laughs> Save the liver! Uh, uh, just something to consider there, right? Now, this is not a voluntary one, but in every other tarot deck, it's it's more like a Odin voluntarily plucking out an eye in order to have mysteries revealed. So there might be this compassion in this aquamarine in terms of your freedom might very well about be freeing yourself and seeing things from a more compassionate perspective. Now, maybe of yourself. I'm I'm really not getting that this is like a soul contract read. Sometimes these what do I need reads, it's just obvious. But we will see. We've got um, three more cards to hit the table. But I will say, I mean, I loved the hangman. And it's just kind of saying, hang out, wait on the will of heaven. Wait on the will of the divine. You have these desires. But right now, things are on pause. And you might have to sacrifice the timing. Your um, demand that it be a certain way, right? And... and and I feel like then that this is the constraint, right? What is it that you want freedom from? You want someone, someone cut my foot loose. <laughs> foot loose. Everybody cut. Everybody cut. Sorry. Holy shit, man. Just, the, my guys, I'm telling you, I have a huge amount of my spirit guides that I call the Shecky Collective because they're always, like, shooting me one-liners all day long. It's a little distracting in bed. <laughs> Unless it's not. Uh, let's do then the Whispers of Love Oracle. We're going to go above your head and whoever else's head is involved here to the higher selves of all involved. Fifth dimension and above eighth chakra and above. Please take a nice deep breath. Yeah, the higher selves of all involved with this Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. Please, what is the Whisper of Love Oracle for them that they need? The piece of information, inspiration, or insight that you have for them. With the Angel of Freedom they need, Aquamarine that they need, that Sagittarian, like, channeling, it feels like, like, balancing, channeling that fire energy that Sagittarius, that crone of flames, the knight of wands on the inner with the hangman on the outside, right? Then from the outside looking in, it's like you might not know it, but you are in a place right now of just having to see things differently and maybe from that compassionate place. So what do you got for them, the higher selves of all involved, this new moon in Pisces waxing to full in Libra? Slow down. Here it is. <laughs> Slow down. Slow down. When you are excited, you get ahead of yourself. Take some time to allow things to unfold. Well, there it is, right? So what is that healing angel of freedom healing in you? It's probably like, oh, they want to... Uh. Slow down. Slow down. It's a lesson I get all the time. Slow down. Particularly when things get glitchy with technology, right? And something's taking forever to upload and things beyond your control. I mean, this is true for everyone sooner or later, but it seems to be really showing prominently here uh, with a lot of that one card clarifying uh, what's going on there. Oh, I did these out of order. Usually I do the healing mantra next. I just put them differently on the table this morning. It was an intense morning. Let's get you your healing mantra. This is from the Ascended Masters. Those who have already completed the curriculum played the game. And I got a little kitty cat trying to wear away my lower leg. Just rubbing up against me. Hey, Melky. Go lay down, lay down, sweetheart. <laughs> my boys, I love them so much. All right, here we go. Please take a nice deep breath. My Ascended Masters, please. One card in clarity for with the Healing Mantra deck by Matt Kahn here. 
What is the perfect healing mantra for this Aquarian Collective? Fixed air. Perfect for mantra work, right? To fix the mind, the element of air on a mantra. It would be most helpful for them uh, that they need. With this aquamarine and the Angel of Freedom and Caridwen, Corona Flame, Sagittarius vibe on the inner, hanged man on the outer, and slow down. When they get excited, they get ahead of themselves, take the time to allow things to unfold. What is their perfect healing mantra that will really help them heal this? This uh, new moon in Pisces waxing to full in Libra, March 2021, please. Demystifying the darkness. This is the shadow work mantra. It's not the only one that talks about shadow work, but this one is specific. My shadow shows me where my love needs to be sent. This is an ongoing process. I, I mean, it's like inner child work and shadow work. At a certain point, it's no longer a healing technique. It's a relationship you have with yourself. It's like brushing your teeth. And if you are, again, an empath, understand that a lot of the shadow work that might be going on is the collective shadow. I would think particularly um, Aquarian's 11th house because of that humanitarian, egalitarian. Yes, you might be more air sign, but if you've got like a strongly placed water moon, just as an example, it doesn't have to be, obviously, it's a general read. Uh, but the, for that, for you to slow down, to allow this energy to integrate you. So then this sacred pause is just that. You didn't do anything wrong. That's what I'm getting. You need to be more compassionate. Well, what am I doing wrong? Again, it's like, first of all, it's the state of the world. But the state of the world, seeking not reason. Reason is a human confection, a human creation. Purpose is divine. There is a higher way of seeing this, but you're being given the opportunity, uh, really, to send love to the lo to give to yourself the love that only you can. Dealing with your shadow, this is is a heavy duty card, and really, this is way more waning moon stuff in in my opinion. But you know, it's not like you have to. It's not like shadow work. Well, shadow work will wait. That doesn't mean it should. Demystifying the darkness, my shadow shows me. Where my love needs to be sent. Remember, this is your shadow, not anybody else's, although there is that aspect of it that is really, in the most part, collective. When darkness is demystified, the scariest feelings, thoughts, ideas, and beliefs are seen as cries for attention from your most hurt and broken parts, right? This is soul retrieval. This is the shamanic descent. This is spiritual alchemy. and I mean, it's just on and on and on. These traditions go back millennia? I mean, to the ancient shamans, right? You know, the, the heroes. I was just talking with somebody about this yesterday. The hero's quest, right, uh, for a brave in a Native American tribe, for, for example, an indigenous tribe, to become uh, right, to become a brave, right? You had to go on your vision quest. Some vision quests involved digging your own grave and staying in it for three days and or until you were rescued by your power animal, which is essentially what animal came to you that you killed and ate and took its power into you. I know now it's like, oh, I'm having a shamanic experience at the spa, but you know, whatever, the gods have their ways. Once the darkness is illuminated, you are able to be the light that transforms the dark instead of hiding in the light to avoid moments of darkness. That's called um, uh, using spirituality to emotionally bypass the shadow. Oh no, vision board, vision board, vision board. Mm, everything in moderation, including moderation. Uh, just as the light can acknowledge how much pain lurks in the darkness, it is the power of your unconditional love that brings your shadow out of hiding, right? So these, and, and because of the holographic nature of this quantum game that we're in called life on planet Earth, we're really all one thing, in other words. So as you are healing this, this is your service and you are freeing yourself from the lead within your shadow, the unprocessed stuff. Energy can't pass through lead. It's an insulator, right? So to alchemize that into gold, one of the best conductors on planet Earth of energy, we're looking at this is all for a much larger purpose than you may realize. We've got one more card to look at. And then I will put this all together. Last piece of the puzzle, Lover's Oracle, Tony Carmine Salerno, uh, same as the Crystal Oracle there. Now this is the Pantheons of Love, which is all of them put together. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm. Yes, yes, yes. My pantheons of love, consisting of the angels, archangels, 
goddesses, gods, ascended masters of loves, and again, the higher selves of all involved here for this Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign watching this video, receiving this reading. What is the message, the oracle they need from all of you in one singular voice, one clarifying message for them? considering they are dealing, they need the angel of freedom and they need that compassion and that gentleness and that tolerance of the aquamarine because they have so much fire inside of them that they are on pause and they need to acknowledge that that's not their fault. They haven't done anything wrong, but the message is to slow down and that to give themselves the love that only they can give themselves, their shadow, those voices that terrify them perhaps, those inflamed feelings and emotions that scare them, that they are calling for the love that only they can give them. So please, what is their perfect lover's oracle? This new moon in Pisces waxing to full in Libra, March 2021. Manifesting miracles. Your dream is soon to become a reality. Trust your heart and continue to follow its guidance. <laughs> Told you you didn't do nothing wrong. It's a setup. It's a setup. It happens all the time. They draw the arrow back on the bow and hold it there until it's ready to launch. And we're like, why hasn't this launched yet? What, is Mercury retrograde again? Is, is Uranus retrograde? I, I was outpatient surgery for that now. Um, this is a very clear read. <laughs> I have to say that really clarified the whole thing. There's so much love here for you. It's very Abraham Hicks. I just hear it. There's so much love here for you. Let me put it all together. This this do make sense. Please take a nice deep breath. My collective pantheons of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, the ascended masters, and the higher selves of all involved. Please may the Aquarian collective sun, moon, rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. Be blessed with all that they truly need. This new moon in Pisces waxing to full in Libra that they may call and work with and receive the freedom that they need with the healing angel of freedom so that this fire, this, this burning, this creativity, this mutable changing quiver of flaming arrows will be acknowledged and accepted while they also realize that they need this time out to see things differently because Miracles are manifesting here. Their dream is soon to become reality for them to trust their heart and continue to follow its guidance while they slow down. That when they're excited, instead of getting ahead of themselves, to take some time to allow things to unfold and de demystify the darkness that needs to be brought to light. My shadow, their shadow showing them where their love needs be sent with this magnificent stone of aquamarine, whether they get it themselves or whether they just take that message of be kind and compassionate and loving with yourself to be tolerant and open and allow goddess energy, your yin energy to feel what it's feeling, but to embrace it and give it the love that only they can give it so that not only do they heal, not only do their dreams come into reality, but they bless and help heal all of life, and not just those they know, all of life for the well-being of all. Because that's Aquarian. So would it be. And so it is. That's Aquarian. That's Italian. Oh my god. Time traveling through commercials. Uh, thank you so much for watching. A very, very clear read. A little bit more mystical than I think necessary for what it's trying to say here. But with that manifesting miracles at the end, I, hang in there. You didn't do anything wrong. But this is maybe an opportunity over this waxing moon to really embrace yourself in a different way, to slow down and to let those feelings come up that maybe are inflamed or angry or in blame. Stuff shadow work is big right now, and it has been for a while. So um, have at it. And certainly, if you need any help, I talk to people about this stuff every day. Send me a message. You want a reading? Find me on Facebook. It's the easiest way. But I also do Zoom and blah, blah. All that info is in the description box. Otherwise, seriously, my Aqualungs, I love you. Wishing you the very best and the very blessed of this new moon in Pisces waxing to full in Libra. Hell, farewell. Go read my book. And blessed, <laughs> blessed be.